Hello and welcome back to The Property Hustle. Before I go any further with this video, make sure you click the subscribe button below and click the bell icon as well so you can get notifications every time I post. Okay, so I owe you all a huge apology. Um, I have not posted in about two months. Um, my last video was towards the end of last year. So actually, Happy New Year. Um, <laughs> I know it's a bit late in the game, but I guess I haven't posted this year. So Happy New Year. Um, I hope you are all well and I thank you guys for patiently waiting. Um, hello to all the new subscribers. Um, essentially, I thought for this week's video, I would sort of explain, give you a bit of a life update and also a property update and just explain exactly why it is it's taken me so long to post a video this year. And hopefully by the end of this video, you guys will forgive me um, and look forward to everything that I have come in for you guys this year. So my last video I posted back in December. Since then, I have been basically working and studying um, really, really hard. I think I've mentioned it in a few of my last videos, um, but I've never really gone into it. Essentially, I work as a commercial surveyor. So I work in property, specifically commercial property. Um, and I've been training for the past sort of two and a half years. And this May, this summertime, I'm due to sit what, um, what the industry calls an APC exam. And essentially, it's the exam that will, hopefully if I pass, I'll become a chartered surveyor. So I will be, imagine it like, you know, lawyers have to pass the bar to become practicing lawyers. In, um, in the property industry, particularly the commercial property industry, um, there's an exam that you have to take uh, in order to become a chartered surveyor, similar to how you'd become a chartered accountant. It's kind of the same thing. And I've been in training for the past two and a half years with one of the the basically the world's biggest property real estate advisory firm um they're called jll you can look them up they're a great firm to work for um so i've been in training with them for two and a half years and i'm now coming up to sort of the end of that training during that training i was also doing my masters which i've officially finished oh my goodness I handed in my dissertation, which is my thesis, um, which was about 14,000 words. I handed that in back in November. When I tell you guys, honestly, it was stress completing that whilst working full time. I think I took, I used up my annual leave day. So like my holiday days, I took about a week off work. Um, I still went into the office, but I wasn't like doing work work. I shut myself off in like a quiet study room and I I kid you not, I wrote out those 14,000 words. Um, there was a moment when I, you know, I hadn't slept in over like 36 hours. I was surviving on like coffee, but I got it written. I've got it here actually. Uh, I did it on real estate crowdfunding. There it is. It's literally... I'm so proud of this document. I don't think you understand. I'm so proud of it. And when I handed it in, I'm not going to lie. I just, I genuinely didn't expect to get the result that I did. I got what is known as a distinction, which is like the highest grade you can get. Um, and I was kind of shocked. I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit shocked because <laughs> I was like, really? I wrote this in like two weeks, but I was passionate about the topic. The topic was real estate crowdfunding, um, which is a topic that I plan to discuss with you guys. In fact, I did a webinar, a live webinar, a few weeks ago with one of the guys that I interviewed for the research element of this um, of this thesis. So um, I plan to post that video sometime in the near future. He, he has yet to send it to me, but when he does, you guys will be the first people I share it with. Um, and basically we spoke about what it was like writing the dissertation and what I enjoyed about writing it and what I learned from it, which is actually I learned quite a lot. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know what real estate crowdfunding is, it's essentially, um, you know, like Kickstarter, how people when they have a product um, and they need to raise money for it, they'll advertise on Kickstarter, raise enough money, and then they'll, that, those will be the funds that they go off and uh, manufacture the product with. Real estate crowdfunding is a very similar situation where people post their development projects um, onto a website and, you know, request funds from you know, your everyday investor, such as, you know, 
I don't know, meet myself, you guys. Um, and once they raise enough money, they use that to then go off and do their project. And you as an investor will get a return on the money that you've given to them. So more on that in the future. But essentially, I handed that in November. I got the feedback in January. So I got a distinction, which I was like super proud of. Um, I found out this week that I've officially passed my, my whole master's degree. I got a merit. Um, the fun doesn't end there because as I told you, I'm due to sit my final kind of interview to become a chartered surveyor. In the property industry, if you're a surveyor, you have to submit paperwork and do an interview in order to become chartered. So I'm currently in that process. I handed in my paperwork on Monday. This is it. It's literally another document that I'm actually really proud of because I worked super hard on it. Um, and so that's submitted and now I've got literally eight weeks to revise like a mad woman um, in order to sit my final exam in May. Um, so that's kind of been my life update in a nutshell. Um, I've had other personal issues going on. Um, to be honest, I wasn't planning on talking about this, but I feel like, you know what, this year, um, I just want to be a bit more honest and open um, about exactly what I'm going through. So you can see that it's not easy um, trying to run your own business and do life at the same time. Um, but essentially, one of my older brothers fell critically ill. Um, so I've been dealing with that, you know. So it, there was like, for the past kind of three and a bit weeks, I've literally been getting in the office at like seven, trying to do do my like APC paperwork stuff. And then I work from let's say nine to six, and then I leave the office, go straight to the hospital, stay in the hospital till about eight, eight, eight thirty go home once I get home I'm gonna do more work and then by the time I go to sleep it's just like sleep wake up and repeat the whole process again um so it has been it's been a roller coaster um but honestly I've lent very heavily on my faith and on God and knowing that my life is in his hands and literally like there was a point where I was like Jesus take the wheel um so I've, you know, if it wasn't for my faith that, you know, I would not have gotten through this period. So in terms of life, I'm doing well. My brother's doing a little bit better now. It's We're not sort of out of the woods as it were, but he's in a better situation. Um, so yeah, I'll try and keep you updated on that as much as I can um, and as much as I'm kind of willing to disclose, but essentially he's doing okay. I finished my master's and handed in my APC paperwork. Now it's just like revision and I can do revision. I'm, I love revision. I'm like an organizational freak. I like, when it comes to revision, like I, I can get my sh shit together and like, I love like getting folders, dividers, color coding, all of that. So like, I think the, the hardest part was writing the stuff up and um, now like kind of revising the sort of wider context of things. So I need to know, you know, a lot of real estate law, like cases, like all of that kind of stuff, but that should be fine. And I've got eight weeks to do that. So that's like life update done. Property update. Um, okay. So I set myself the goal of getting 12 properties by the end of this year. So far, I have not managed to get any this year because as I've just explained, I have been chock-a-block busy, but I know that's not really an excuse because I could have found time if I just organized myself a bit more. But what's done is done. So going forward, um, I still wanna aim for that goal. Um, I, Cause I'm a firm believer in setting yourself really high goals last year, in the beginning of last year, I set myself the goal of getting two properties. And sure enough, I got those two properties. And it got me thinking, like, if I'd set myself a larger goal, I would have worked harder to achieve that higher goal, you know? So this year, I've set myself, I've set the bar really high in order to try and push myself to reach, <clears throat> to reach that goal. If I fall short, I fall short. But I'd rather know that I, you know, did everything I possibly could to get that really, to achieve that really high goal, um, regardless of whether I actually achieve it. But I plan to, 12, it's a lofty number, but I can do it. Um, I'm currently working with an investor at the moment. We're looking for a property to potentially purchase. Um, and then probably the rest of the properties, I'm gonna just keep doing the rent to rent model. 
which actually I haven't explained to you guys properly. So I think my next video, I'm going to explain exactly what the rent to rent model is and how you can get involved because it's one of the, I'd say, cheapest ways to get into property investment and it's really good for cash flow. So I shall do my next video on rent to rent uh, strategy. Um, but essentially, yeah, 12 properties by the end of the year. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'll get there, but I plan to. Um, and with regards to the two properties that I have at the moment, God, I feel like I've been, it's been coming from all angles. So the one in Nottingham, um, there has been an issue with, essentially in the kitchen, there wasn't an extractor fan. So when the tenant is cooking, all of the um, steam is going onto the roof and it's causing an, a condensation issue. Now, in the medium to, sh in the short to medium term, it's not so much of a big issue, but in the long term as a landlord and also as an investor, I don't want my property to deteriorate. So the plan is to put a um, an extractor fan over the kitchen hob that um, extracts all of the condensation out and, and blows it out into the outside. Now there are other extractor fan models where, which just recirculate the air. So like clean so they'll suck sucks the air in cleans it um and then redistributes it into the house but that kind of defeats the whole point of having an extractor fan so i'm going for the more expensive option because it's going to be better in the long term but essentially i this problem came about towards the end of last year i phoned two different tradesmen to give me quotes or to go and have a look at the property um both of them kind of just went a wall like it was, it was close to Christmas, so I could understand that they were like fully booked up and they, they both said, look, we're not gonna have time until the new year to go and see the property. So I said, okay, that's fine. Um, and so come January, I called them both again. The first one I called, I left him loads of voicemail, sent him texts, no response. The second one I called, he said he was happy to go and see the property. I gave my tenant his number so that the tenant could organize a time when he can show up. Um, on the day of the inspection, he messaged the tenant to say, oh, you know, there's no uh, the contract or the person that was going to come to the property is ill. So I was like, okay, fine, you guys can reschedule. The guy didn't reschedule. I've been trying to call him all week. I've had no response. So I thought, you know what, it's time to go down a different route. So I used Facebook. There's a site called UK Property Traders, so I advertised the job on there. I had someone um, contact me, so I, I advertised on there, and I also um, used a site called mybuilder.com. Honestly, that site is, like, so good. Um, mybuilder.com, it's basically a site where you post the job that you want doing, whether it's, like, tiling, electrical work, gas work, whatever, and you can invite people to quote for the job, so you can get, you know, up to five people to come out to the property, see the extent of the work that you want doing, and then they'll quote on it, and then essentially you choose the best person for the job, or the, the cheapest quote, whatever it is that you want, but you choose it, and it's a really good way of finding contractors who are close to you, nearby, who can just come in and quickly solve the problem, um, <clears throat> and each person is reviewed after the job so you can literally scroll through the different profiles of these tradesmen and be like you know um okay so he has you know 99 percent positive feedback or this one doesn't have um has maybe 70 percent, so you won't go with that one so it's a really really good site mybuilder.com i'll put it in the um description down below as well so you can go there if you need it um so I actually managed to find someone off of my builder. He was a nice guy. He's not had any, I think he's new to the my builder site because he hasn't had any feedback at all. Like he's recently joined in February. Um, so he was very quick to respond. He called me immediately. We had a conversation. He was really nice. We like um, had a bit of a laugh because essentially here in the UK, I don't know where you are, but here in the UK, it's been snowing like crazy. And so um, I, he was like, you know, he said he would try and get out on the weekend. I said, look, look, don't trouble yourself. I don't want you driving on these like dangerous roads. Like, it's OK. You can wait till next week. Um, and so, yeah, so he's going to go see the property next week and he's going to advise how much it would cost for him to put it in place. Fingers crossed it doesn't cost too much, but um, I do have like a cash reserve for it, things such as this. Every month I put money aside for maintenance and repairs. Um, if you're going into property, that's one thing that you should always account for because honestly, like since I've had 
just this Nottingham property, I think I spent close to a grand on just like stuff to do. It's like I had to sort out, actually no, I spent over a grand because I had to sort out damp issues. I then also had to decorate. Then there was a lot of issues in the beginning with the boiler. So I had to get a contractor out, a gas engineer out um, constantly to deal with that. So I was just been hell with that. <laughs> <laughs> that Nottingham property, um, I've still made money, I'm still netting, you know, making a profit, but it's just annoying when every month there's like another issue to deal with. And now that I've got this second property that I'm managing, you know, there's other issues with that as well. So yeah, that's kind of the property update at the moment. Um, I've signed up to a lot of uh, property like meetups, I'm trying to like, get myself out there again, because I think since uh, sort of October last year I don't think I've been to any pro property networking event I've met up with other like-minded people and other investors um but I haven't actually uh like been to events and stuff so I think this year I definitely that's one of my goals as well is to attend more property networking events so yeah I feel like I've rambled on for the best part of 20 minutes I don't know how long this video will be once I finish editing it but I'm just so glad that I finally sat down to do it um, it's taken me so long because every time I'm like, okay, do I film or do I study? Do I film or do I study? And now like, there's no excuse. I had to film something. Um, so I hope you guys forgive me and I look forward to providing you all with great content this year. Okay, that's enough from me. I shall see you all next Sunday. Unfortunately, that is it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for new content every Sunday. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.